What's up everyone? Today we need to unpack the mutable T-square that will be dominating the skies and charts for the month of August. So most of Leo season gets dedicated to these interlocking transits that are super important. And these transits are also going to have a huge influence over the year in general. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about the lesser conjunction of Mars and Jupiter. This is happening in Gemini. We also have a Jupiter Saturn square. This is a dominant signature for the year. And we also have Venus getting in on the action with her opposition to Saturn. So this makes up a huge mutable T-square that is going to be in play for almost the entire month. So let's go ahead and pull up the first new moon chart. All right, so here's our new moon chart. This is the chart for August 4th, 2024. You can see the new moon is taking place at 12 degrees Leo, 34 minutes. This might be a memorable degree for some of you who remember Venus's retrograde from last year. This is where she's stationed direct. So if that was a big story for you last summer, then this new moon may have some things to say. However, I'm not here to focus as much on the new moon chart itself. What I'm here to do is understand what is playing out between these lunations. So we've got a full moon over here on August 19th. We'll come back to this chart, but this is happening at 27 degrees Aquarius. So as you can see, basically this second half of Leo season is dominated by this mutable T-square. And so the lunations, they tell us about what's happening for the next two weeks. So in other words, this configuration, which is coming into a peak under this new moon and is directly involved in this full moon. This full moon is ruled by Saturn. And here Saturn is in an exact square with Jupiter and is in an exact opposition with Venus. And Mars is very close by. So that's why we need to understand this configuration through the new and full moons because these periods are are dominated by this okay so <laughs> where do we begin right now we're already feeling this aspect build this mars jupiter configuration and i say where do we begin because it's 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 tricky to tease these configurations apart it takes a lot of practice but let's just Let's just break it all down. So we've been feeling this configuration build, this power and raw energy, excitement. This is like a pep rally going on. And I think this is perfect energy that's been building as we watch the Olympics and we watch people perform incredible physical feats. I don't know about you, but the gymnastics are my favorite. And I'm just so impressed with these athletes and so enamored and just have so much respect for how much work and dedication goes into it and you have to believe in the work that you do and that's what a configuration like mars jupiter has to say is that we we have to believe in what it is that we're going for so this is like a giant as i said pep rally getting excited about the big event this is a time to get people motivated, to get people riled up, to get people fired up and enthusiastic about the new idea, the new adventure. Now, let's talk for a moment about Jupiter and Gemini, because this is a dominating signature that we're dealing with for, for the year. And this is one that is bringing a lot to like education and knowledge and the sharing of information, the sharing of knowledge. But with Jupiter and Gemini, it can get a little overwhelming because Jupiter's trying to make sense of everything. Jupiter's trying to have like a platform, a soapbox to stand on and have a message to share. But it's difficult in a rapidly changing environment where the story keeps changing, when the players keep changing, when the terrain keeps changing. Jupiter is having difficulty in Gemini finding a platform, finding a soapbox, finding a strong stance, because 
Like I said, everything keeps changing. And we're seeing that play out very much here at home where I am in the United States, where you know certain Geminis are figuring out their plan of attack right now. We've got two candidates that are Geminis. Trump is a Gemini sun and Harris is a Gemini rising. So trying to figure out what the plan of attack is, trying to trying to develop that, because obviously Trump has to re-strategize and Harris is like, you know, maybe wasn't expecting to be in this position at this time. So yeah, there's there's a lot that both of them have to figure out and get their fan bases excited and motivated and want to come out and vote for them. So that's kind of what this aspect is telling about. And of course, we do have the Democratic National Convention coming in just before the full moon. And so that is a time, um, like I said, for, for both around getting excited, building momentum. Now, again, Jupiter and Gemini, though, it's, it's very overwhelming. And I think Mars kind of doubles down on this idea of overstimulation and the need to check our nervous systems because this can be like information burnout and just exhaustion from by the time you think you have a handle on something, it, it shifts, it changes, the story changes. So this is a lot of difficulty trying to keep up. This is also a lot of mouths moving, okay? Because Gemini, it's there's a dual stream. So sometimes we're saying one thing, but we mean another. Sometimes we're saying something over here to this group of people, and we're over here saying a different thing to another group of people. Mars in Gemini has jokes. Jupiter in Gemini has jokes. Both these planets together create a great deal of mischief. This could be a barrage of insults, okay? This could be a barrage of insults. This could be um, rumors. There was that rumor going around about J.D. Vance not too long ago and a couch. And we all know it's not true now, but people are still going to joke about it. And that's kind of where Saturn comes in here. Saturn comes in and Saturn is going to try to say, hey, like, that's a little weird to say, or hey, like, we can't, we can't be making untrue statements like that. Or, hey, can you please clarify what you mean by that? So Saturn is trying, it's like you're trying to get a bunch of kids at the dinner table to be serious and to stay on topic. But at the end of the day, it's like, what's the point? Because Saturn kind of being in Jupiter's sign isn't strongly resourced by Jupiter. So Saturn is trying to stick to the facts, trying to stick to the story. Saturn in Pisces is saying, hey, we have really big problems to deal with. Again, I've talked about this at length on this channel, but Saturn in Pisces is where there's no hope left, like where we feel completely hopeless about, um, you know, a situation or where there's kind of a lack of faith about a situation. Like we can't just trust people to make decisions for themselves when there's all these photoshopped images going around the internet and influencing the way people think, especially for older generations who, who aren't as good at detecting what images are, are fake. And that's something that Jupiter in Gemini, especially in its trine with Pluto has done is this is the birth of AI. So this is all brand new. It, it takes our minds a while to learn how to understand our relationship with it, how to adapt to it, how to recognize what's fake and what's not. So there's a lot of misinformation coming out. And that's where I said mischief, a lot of mischief over here. And some of that, that mischief is part of how to rile people up, how to get people on board, how to get people upset or excited or inspired, this can be a great deal of encouragement here. But just know that there is a little bit of a sleight of hand with Gemini, being able to use strategy or use smoke and mirrors to get the message across. And that's what I was trying to say about Saturn, is that ultimately Saturn's trying to stick to the facts and, and stay on task and stick to the truth, but it's it's having a really hard time finding out what, what that truth is, especially as things keep changing and stories keep changing. 
and trying to trying to decipher through the lies as the lies add up much more quickly. It's hard for Saturn to keep up. So it's almost like this configuration over here wins out. So you kind of just have to let them, let the kids get their sillies out. You kind of have to let them hop on one foot until they're tired. You kind of have to let them do it and maybe get on board with it. Like use the, use these tools to your advantage. So yeah, I think there's a lot, like I said, going to be a lot of moving mouths and a lot of mess in the media around this time. This can also be a combination for propaganda. Okay, Mars, Jupiter. Now, depending on where you are in the world, that could be propaganda with a uppercase P, like, hey, we, we need you to come fight for us. Or it could be propaganda with a lowercase P where you can kind of, where you have to be more discerning to see, you know, what the motivations of the message are. And we have to also take care with this Mars-Jupiter configuration because this configuration has a tendency to scatter, to scatter our attention, to get distracted with, with gossip or things that are funny or things that are inconsequential. And those things may be something that we need right now. Maybe we need levity. Maybe we need the entertainment right now. But Saturn in Pisces is kind of saying like, Remember the facts. Remember where your heart is. Remember what what the meaning is. Because Pisces is a sign that is always trying to find meaning. And Saturn in Pisces has its work cut out for it because things have been really heavy in the collective. And so we can't just thoughts and prayers it away. You know, what's what's the meaning? How do I connect with this? How do I show up? And that's where Venus in Virgo is going to come in. So I'm just going to jump over here to the full moon chart for a moment because that's where this aspect is exact. Um, Venus in Virgo, and by the way, Venus enters Virgo on the day of the new moon. So this happens a little bit later in the day. But Venus in Virgo is all about showing up, <laughs> showing that you care, demonstrating by acts of service, acts of doing. Um, Venus in Virgo is incredibly thoughtful. Venus in Virgo sees a mess and says, I'm going to start picking it up. I'm going to start cleaning it up. Venus in Virgo sees something that needs to get done and she's going to get a move on it because she cares. So Venus in Virgo is about showing that we care. And that's where these two even though we're in an opposition, oppositions still have something in common. And I think even though this aspect is also going to show difficulty, and we can talk about that in a moment, um, Venus in, in Virgo and Saturn in Pisces, they're trying to problem solve. They're, prob they're trying to problem solve. Typically, um, I mean, typically because Venus is ruling Saturn. So like she has she has stake in Pisces basically. So Venus is able to help Saturn out here. So remember when I was saying that Saturn is struggling. Saturn is struggling to try to get people to stay on task and stick to the why, stick to the most important things. Venus is able to help Saturn by saying, "Okay, we just need people to show up. We need we need people to do something." And so yeah, there's <laughs> There's a lot here. The other things that Venus and Saturn can do while we're on the topic, Venus and Saturn, this very often shows challenges in relationships because we're thinking a lot about the future with Venus, Saturn aspects. We're thinking about what is working and more importantly, what's not working. And, you know, very often there's a question of, okay, well, is this tolerable. Well, how much longer do I want to put up with this? And so the Mercury or I'm sorry, Venus in Virgo is saying like, okay, like let's be proactive about this. So she's noticing what's wrong. She's she's kind of nitpicky Venus in Virgo. And I did a whole video on Venus in Virgo. And I promised we'd talk about Venus and Saturn. So here we are. Um she's saying, "Let's find a solution. How can we work on this?" How can we both take accountability? It's it's dual. How can we both take accountability? And maybe it's a little bit of 
doing something to take the pressure off, making a change. We're in immutable territory. We can make changes. But maybe it's also accepting our humanity because that's something that I feel that the angelic sign of Virgo and the ethereal sign of Pisces is that there's this desire for perfection. And we can get close, but we can never be perfect. We can be perfectly imperfect when we learn to love and accept ourselves. And when we can love and accept our own humanness, our own flawed nature, we can learn to give other people in our lives some slack, to love them for exactly who they are and where they are, to love each other while we're in this beautiful, messy process of being human, of becoming. We're always in this process of becoming, right? And it's it obviously works best if we can love and support one another as we go through it. So it's a little bit of both here. It's a little bit of love, support, and allow, but also let's be proactive. Let's let's work on this. Let's be each other's cheerleaders here. So Mars, Jupiter, it wants us to get excited about something, it wants us to be motivated about something. There is a great deal of energy here and there's energy to do to feel like you can do it all, but you need to be careful not to burn out. And that's again where this, the, these planets of Venus and Saturn come into play because Saturn says, you know, let's focus on the things that are most worth our time and energy that are going to have the, the most important yield. Let's prioritize. And Venus is saying, let's do something. Let's get out of our head, Gemini, where we have all these ideas or we're endlessly scrolling or what are we feeling? Let's get into our body. Let's do something. Okay. So that's how Venus can help out. But there's a lot of worry inherent in this square too. There's a lot of worry. So I think Venus is really the, the key to helping us here. Instead of just feeling riled up or helpless or hopeless with Saturn, Venus is the key. Venus says, okay, there's something we can do. There's something we, we can find outlets. We can start small. We can do something that we're already doing, but do it in a different way or do it better. So Venus is trying to help us out a lot there. Another fascinating thing to understand about this Venus-Saturn opposition is that Saturn is Donald Trump's time lord right now. So there's a lot happening for, for Trump right now. This is happening in his eighth house, his second and eighth house. So there's a big financial story. And the 11th house is supporters, okay, followers. For Kamala Harris, Venus is her time lord. Venus is her time lord right now. And this is her Venus return. So all of this action is happening to her natal Venus right now. So she's feeling Saturn. She's feeling Mars. She's also got some Jupiter there. But this shows difficulty from enemies because this is, she's in a 12th house perfection year. So there's, there's challenges from enemies. So I would bet that, um, while Trump seems to be struggling right now with how to brand her and how to attack her and everything like that, I would think that he has it figured out by this time, his plan of attack. And she may be feeling a little bit of pushback um, at that time. So that'll definitely be something to watch as both of their Time Lords go head to head here. Okay, so I know I'm going to be watching. I've kind of been obsessing about the prediction. Um of the forecast because I, I got into it thinking it would be fun. And of course, this has been kind of an insane election cycle, very eventful, lots of plot twists. And so the one prediction that I made, <laughs> I'm now having to go back and like touch back in with it because it's changing so much, which is totally that Jupiter and Gemini thing. So I, I think we're going to expect a lot of storyline changes around that time. Okay, so here's our chart for the exact Mars-Jupiter conjunction. This is happening at 16 degrees Gemini and 40 minutes. So make sure you look in your own chart, wherever Gemini lands in your own chart by house. This is going to describe a great deal of supercharged energy, something to get excited about, something to get you motivated about in that part of your chart. Now, the other chart that I want to show you is, okay, and look, this is August 14th. Now we're going to August 16th. This is where we see 
the exact Mars square to Saturn. Okay. And that is a deeply frustrating aspect that, again, both of the figures that I mentioned are going to be feeling intensely. If you have planets around this degree, you're going to be feeling this a great deal too. And we're all going to be feeling this in the collective to some degree. So you'll just be paying, you'll just be feeling it a lot more if you have planets around 16 degrees mutable signs. But anyhow, um, Mars Saturn can be very frustrating because Mars wants to do all the things. Again, I kind of already explained this a little bit, but Mars and Gemini wants to do all the things. We have a million good ideas with Jupiter here. Jupiter has all these huge ideas it's trying to push us toward. Mars wants to do them all. But Saturn is saying, wait, 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 we can't. We can't do that just yet. We have to wait. Or we're being, um, there's some kind of hindrance outside of our control coming in to, to put a stop to it, to pump the brakes. So a lot of times the goal, we really want to go, we really want to go, but we can't yet. An example I can think about is like, if you've ever taken a pre-workout drink <laughs> and your muscles are tingling, they're like, we have to, we have to work out or we're going to, our fingers are going to feel like they're tickling. <laughs> but let's say one of your, your kids needs something, then you have to do you have to tend to them first. That's Saturn. Like you have to do the responsibility thing first. That's a personal story. I'm sure you have a personal story too. We've all been impacted by Mars Saturn. We've all been impacted by that where the energy is there, but if you put it off too long, you might lose steam. We've all been there where we had a really good idea, but we have to bookmark it for another time because we just don't have the time and space to do it. And that's kind of what Saturn's coming in and doing here is saying, you know, great ideas, Mars, Jupiter, but we don't have the space to do that right now, or it's not going to work right now, or it's really not the climate for that right now. Moving along, we, here's the exact Mars, Jupiter conjunction. This one, wait a second. Okay, so that's still the same one. Um, not sure why I have that chart. Ignore that one. Here's the Jupiter square Saturn. That's what I wanted. <laughs> Here's the Jupiter square Saturn. So this is the exact square between Jupiter and Saturn. And this is an inherently challenging aspect in and of itself because Jupiter wants us to have things to be hopeful about, to be cheerful about, to grow to think positive, to be optimistic about things. And Saturn is the reality check. Saturn says, no, we, let's focus on what's in front of us. Let's embellish what's right here, right now. Um, so Saturn is all about essentials and sticking to what's absolutely essential. Saturn is minimalist. So we're going to be working with this Jupiter-Saturn square for a while. The next one that we have is going to be exact on December 24th, 2024. And after that, there will be a third square, but that's going to happen after these planets change signs. When Jupiter moves into its sign of its exaltation in Cancer and Saturn moves into its fall in Aries. So for right now, these two are kind of evenly matched. I think Jupiter's a little stronger in Gemini. However, Jupiter goes into a sign where it ha it's deeply empowered and Saturn is not. So we're going to be working with this story for about another year. Um, so yeah, that, that third square will be in um, like the back half of 2025. Yeah. So we've got some time. And if you all want more information on Jupiter and Gemini in great detail, I have a two hour webinar available on my website. That's how you can support me. That's how you can support this channel is by purchasing my classes, purchasing my webinars, getting readings with me. And so you can get that webinar um, on Jupiter and Gemini. We go into great detail about it and it's square with Saturn. And I also have over 100 years of historical examples of Jupiter and Gemini. So be sure to check that out on my website, katherineurban.com. So some other things that we're going to be dealing with of Jupiter squared 
Saturn is there's going to be a lot of media, a lot of media issues. Um, and Saturn, again, is going to be trying to correct that. What's true, what's not true. Where can you fact check that for me? What are your sources? Where did that come from? And also due to the influence of Pluto and Aquarius, there's a lot of um, trying to hold these bigger platforms accountable. Um, I know there was a thing this week about Trump's assassination attempt photo being flagged as fake. And so there was like a whole thing with Meta um, around why that was. At the same time, you see a photoshopped image of Kamala Harris and Jeffrey Epstein like embracing, obviously fake. Like that's that's part of what Saturn's job here is, is like, you know, how can we go to the source in trying to um in trying to curb a lot of the nonsense that Jupiter and Gemini wants to churn out. There's a lot of head versus heart going on here. Um, the intellect of Jupiter and Gemini versus the heart and instinct and spirit of Pisces. You know, I fixed my microphone issue, but if you're hearing things, it's my little, my little fairy over here. It's a uh, take your daughter to work day. <laughs> and yeah, I had like a gate on the microphone to stop children's noises, but I guess I was cutting out too much. So hopefully the children's noises don't bother some of you. Um, and thanks for telling me, by the way, I really appreciate you all letting me know. So anyhow, we're going to be dealing a lot with what is being distributed as news, what is being, what is worthy of news, what people can say, what people can print, what people can share. There's a lot of that tension here in this square. And there's a lot more things that this configuration is doing in terms of education, novels, what people can read, what can be taught in schools. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot of that here too, because what else is Mars Jupiter is like religious or spiritual war like wanting to fight for one's beliefs, wanting to fight for something motivated by what we believe. So right now there's a big push to put religion back in public schools in the United States. And so Saturn is going to be the law. What, what's legal, what's acceptable, what's not. Um, so we're going to be seeing a lot of that around this configuration too. A lot of people trying to push their beliefs and try to trying to create laws and structure around them, but it's there's a tension here. So that's a little bit about this aspect. I know we had a lot to cover. There was a lot to break down. Let's finish it out here again by circling back to this full moon chart. Once again, this full moon is ruled by Saturn in Pisces. Once again, this full moon on August 19th is directly describing this full moon chart. This happens right after the DNC concludes. Um, so yeah, whatever comes of that, we're gonna be seeing it here around the full moon. Also, another thing to, to keep in mind is that we've just had a Mercury Kazemi, and that happened here on, on the 18th, I believe. So let me pull that up. Yeah, Mercury Kazemi. I know I talked about this a little bit in my Mercury in, um, Leo or Virgo video. I think of the Virgo one because we covered the retrograde there. But we're seeing a Mercury Kazemi here at 26 degrees Leo. And that is in an exact square with Uranus. So watch for the insights. <laughs> this is going to be pivotal, wild, <laughs> crazy. I think we're really in for it. I mean, we've been seeing it all year, but I think that this month of August is going to bring wild, um, it's going to give our nervous systems a run. So everyone try to, again, do the Saturn thing of sticking to what's important. Um, I'm about to go do that right now. I'm going to go spend some time with my girl. Um, but pay attention to the like jaw-dropping, flooring, 
out of left field insights of this Mercury Cassini. So thanks for watching today, everyone. I know that was a lot to kind of sift through. We'll circle back in Virgo season um, to touch base on what's going on there. This is Leela, my daughter. It's been a while since she made an appearance and she's been quietly playing with tarot cards over there. And this is the card that she chose. So she wanna share this with everyone. And Leela, what does, what card, um, what card is this? Tell me about this card. Um, it's, it's, it's. It's the 10 of cups. It's a 10 of cups and I love the rainbow from it and I and I have the children dancing. Yeah, it looks like a happy family, huh? Yeah, it's a beautiful card to draw. So hopefully that's a good omen <laughs> for some of us with this um, mutable T-square, but it's gonna bring changes, rapid changes. So hopefully it's to your benefit, hopefully it's to your favor. Again, watch your nervous system, prioritize. So I'm gonna go do that right now. And I'll talk to you all next time. Bye. Thanks so much for tuning in with me today. For more astrology in your world, you can connect with me on all platforms at Astro Catherine. You can also head on over to my website, katherineurban.com, where you can book your next astrology reading. We'll go into depth into your natal chart, your progressions, your perfections, your solar return, your transits, and beyond. You can also join my mailing list where you can stay up to date with me on new classes as well as article drops. I look forward to connecting with you and I'll see you next time.